Okay, I'm back, and today I'm going to do a demonstration of Box, which is a computer simulator that runs inside your computer as if you have a computer. And when you work with this, you have to have a simulated hard disk, you have to have um, certain settings in the configuration file that's a text file in your home directory for the thing to run. And so I'm just going to start out with what the result can be, and then uh, if you want to stick around and see how you can get this thing done, uh, why I'll show you. So I think the first thing I did, and I'm just going to show you what the commands are, but since I've already done it, okay, it doesn't need to be done again. I am, I went here, and normally a bunch of users are going to do the pseudo thing, but I like this. I also have to give myself a root user ID. And I don't like authentication failures, though. I'm in here. To get box, you just have to go at, actually, a uh, better way to present it is you go to the Ubuntu Software Center. And you just type the word box in there. You can see these four pop up. If these were not installed, that would not say remove, it would say install. I have an IA32 PC emulator called Box. I have Box BIOS. I have the X11 plugin called Box X. And the WX Windows plugin for Box called Box WX. That is done. Okay, so now I have a little icon here. The way I made this icon is by typing the command. I would have typed the command line in that little box, and I gave it this crazy blue man. <laughs> and now we'll just start. And it should be, guess what? Windows 95. I'm running Windows 95 in my Linux. Isn't it great? Okay, I'm going to move my mouse around. I'm going to touch the internet and touch AOL for free. And let's see what happens when I try to go on the internet. Apparently double clicking isn't working, but I, okay, set up options, automatic, you know, like set up, and I need a CD-ROM, and since I don't have that configured yet, I'm going to cancel. Then when I shut down, I am out of there. You can install programs. That is the real Windows 95 in there installed on a little hard disk. Uh, uh, it's a hard disk image file, which is this Win95 image file right there. And <laughs> boy, I wonder if that virus scanner is going to find any viruses in there. That's, that's the most unnecessary program I've ever had. Clammy, <laughs> clam edge virus. You don't need to worry about that. Okay, so I've got my image here. This is an image file. The way it works is you have to configure the box configuration file to have to know what image file to use, what BIOS to use, what keyboard to use, a lot of things that go into a regular computer has to be written down in, in an esoteric fashion. And I'll tell you, this will change over time. I had many moons ago a backup of, oh, up here in my uh, one terabyte iOmega Ego, and here in my Ubuntu, no, not there. In fact, it's up further. It's your backup of CD backups. And where is my box with there it is? And in, so it used to be in my home directory under James, the boxrc file. That name has not changed. Used to used to use uh, configure parameters like floppy A, disk C, VGA ROM image. And this was a working uh, boxrc file. What happens is when box starts up, it looks for this file. It's run from the same directory you're in, and in, in Linux, when you run a command from uh, just the command line, the equivalent of, of this, uh, it starts in your home directory. So, as a result of that, it looks for this boxrc file right here and reads it. Now, I this is a box file that I created earlier today to get Windows 95 to run. If you want to use Box, it's not just going to come with a config file and a disk image and Windows 95 installed on it. you got to do all that stuff yourself. And so I, I'm the beneficiary of my past use of this program and past familiarity with it. But I still had to reconfigure my whole BoxRC file because this kind of language with the ATO master enabled and all that 
certainly is different than this old kind of language of use CD-ROM D, you know, disk C, floppy A. It's completely changed. How do you get this thing to write? The easiest way to do this, and uh, without destroying my own boxrc file, I'm going to rename this to 2 boxrc, so that way, or 2 doesn't matter, that way when the program runs, it'll do the command line so you can see, it just doesn't go into Windows 95, it does this instead, and it asks you to set it up. And this is how you set up your, your, your file. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you how to do a very basic First, I'll show you how to make a hard disk. So that's the most important thing. And then I'll do a very basic setup of this. So right now, I am going to quit now. And I'll just clear this so we can have a clear look at what I'm going to do here. And let me make sure I'm actually picking that. Yes, I am. OK, so um, to make a hard disk image like you would for in Ghost, in fact, if you were to take a hard disk image of one of your old hard disks and plop that file uh, until box to read that it would treat it as though uh, it was you know, a hard disk and your, your operating system would run from it Anyway, so I'm gonna go uh, the, the program you want to use to create a hard disk image if you don't want to download it from the box site And they don't have images that are that large is BX image And that comes as a part of the box suite that installs in Ubuntu So now it says there you know, I'm going to create a floppy or a hard disk image for you. What do you want? I want a hard disk. I press enter to select the, to the item in the uh, brackets there. I'm going to pick flat. I don't want the hard disk size to grow on me and overtake my own hard disk. And then I'm going to pick a size in megabytes. And this time, um, that Windows disk was 500 megs. You know what? I might as well go for 500. Why not? Okay, so now the one thing I have to write down is this information here for future for future reference. Because when I go in to configure box and create that box RC file, the only thing I really need to know is that the cylinders is 1015, the heads are 16, and the sectors are 63. And maybe I might need to know it's 499.57, but I doubt it. In fact, this is the same exact size as my Windows 95. Now it's going to say, what would I like to name the image? I would like to name that image c.imagebob. So I will just press enter, and it has made it for me. So a 500 megabyte file has been created for me, and I could look at it, see it here, go down to the bottom, and I could see there is c.image, and it's 499.6, a little different than what they advertise, but hey, everything's going to be OK. Now let's try out box. But I still have to configure it to load this hard disk up. And I'm also going to want to save my configurations when I do so. So let's fire a box. And since I, it doesn't have a boxrc file to, to read, because I renamed mine, it's going to bring me to the same place I was at before. And there's two important options that you want. One is edit, and one is save options too. The first thing I want to do is edit my options to conform with the hard disk that I've already put in there. And then I'm going to save that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot into my computer without an operating system and have it tell me there is no operating system. Then I'll know everything's OK. And then I'm going to want to enable my uh, CD-ROM drive. And then I'm going to uh, be able to install a operating system there. Get it? Got it? Good. OK, so right now I'm going to press 3 for edit. And for my, um, I might as well give myself a CD-ROM drive, right? But I don't know how to make it. Now, nah, let's just try the disk options first. Okay, disk, and OK, so now it says ATA channel 0. Well, all that means is just the place where, in, in, in the inside of a computer, there's a two, one or two places on the motherboard where a, a, a fat cable looks like, like this can attach, and then, you know, like that. <laughs> Imagine that being able to stick into this mother fake motherboard, this paper, and then this would be the slave position, that's the master position, and this is an ATA slot. Okay, so it's saying, eight, what am I doing? Uh, I'm doing the ATA channel, and I'm going to enable that ATA channel, 
When it wants to know the input output address, I don't give a crap. I'm going to accept their defaults, which is perfectly great for me. Now, on each HEA channel, I can have a master and a slave drive. I think I'm going to want to have um, the, the, the hard disk and the CD to be on two different channels. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up ATA channel 1, which is option 6. And I'm going to enable that, and I'm going to accept their defaults. Now I'm going to configure the first hard drive CD channel on ATA. ATA0, and in this case, since I'm going to want to be able to boot from the CD, I don't remember if Windows 95 boots from the CD. Anyway, uh, let's go with, um, but NetBSD 1.6 will. So, uh, let's go with um, 4 for the hard drive, and it says no. The only thing I really have to change here is to yes, and I want to be a disk. And the file name is going to be c.img, and it is a flat device, so I accept that. Number heads, number cylinder, sorry, is 1015. Number heads is 16, and sector 63. And that's fine with me. Auto BIOS, all that, that is great. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to do my ATA channel number one, the other cable. So up to four cables can fit into this simulated computer. And a, did I just do number six? Let's see, number six, it is enabled. Okay, so let's just press enter to accept all those things. Let's go to zero, that is enabled. Because, why am I going in there? Okay, let's go down to seven. Enable my device, and this one I want to be a CD-ROM. Got confused there for a second. File name. Hmm. Do I want to take a? Do I want to have to take a disk image of my? Hmm. It's media inserted in drive. This is a simulation. So what you're saying is, when you start it up whatever image you have whatever image you've made of your hard disk do you want the simulated computer to think that it's inserted or not in this case I want to say yes okay so now that means I'm gonna have to get out of here or I'm going to have to change the boot options, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make the first boot device, which they give by default to be a floppy, I want it to be a disk. And I want the second boot device to be CD-ROM. I'm going to stop, and I want to go over 15, and then I'll start up again.